recording. So, hi guys, uh, Gav from Burning Gas Hall and Ass, and probably as you can see to my left is Mrs. Burning Gas Hall and Ass, Instagram as you know, and we've got here Ross Beats World. Hello, Ross Beats World. He's got his visor down, he's obviously very camera shy today. So, as you know, we are on our bikes, as you can see right in front of you, Ross, the 650 Ninja, or his ER6F, as you can probably see there, stay on a soft tail, and me on the Stage 5 Street Glide. I did promise you more 8 pangers and loud exhaust, so I brought it all out today. We are actually on a run up to Loch Lomond, and as you can see from the beautiful Scottish sunshine, we are blessed to have a great Sunday, so... Enjoy the road up and uh, we'll get chatting. Speak to you soon. Recording. So guys, um, we are on the road to Balloch, which is on the south of Loch Lomond. Um, we're up with Sarah's behind me in her soft tail and we have Ross on his Kawasaki 650 Ninja or the ER6F, known everybody here in the UK and most of Europe. So, what a glorious day, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm up here testing up a new camera angle and just enjoying the sunshine while we are, have the blessed to have it here at the moment because the weather changes that frequently in Scotland during April and May that we have to take every opportunity while we can. Um, so, you're getting really quite a good day for this. So we're out here just in a little group ride. Um, I will get the group in front of me in the near the future, but I'm just making sure that everybody gets safe to their and to the initial destination, so we can top up fuel and then head up the Abone Abone banks off a lot of Lomond. But anybody who hasn't been to Scotland. This is the fav our favourite part of being, living here. I know the weather's crap, let's face facts, it is. It's absolutely terrible for about 75% of the year. But when it comes to the actual scenery, can you really beat that? I don't know if you guys can see this, but yeah. So, next stop is going to be Loch Lomond, and we'll catch you there. We are on the road up the west west side of Loch Lomond, just had to get my bearings there for a second, and right now you can see right in front of me there is Mrs. Burning Gas on ass on the 2017 Softail Slum S, and I've actually lost somebody, we've lost Ross Meets World, um, he was in front of Sarah and his sense of direction is absolutely appalling so he's probably took the wrong junction as per normal and he'll probably catch up eventually by just basically having a look at his phone and going, oh that's where he's went. So we'll see, we'll see what happens if he catches up. So this gives me a little opportunity to have a little chat about today's kind of thing. We've obviously got this British Heart Foundation run coming up and it's a group. It's a group of four. Um, so I've always been involved with like like runs, so to speak, and you know, as in riding on my own. I've ridden for years, my own motorcycle. I've like with, with all my friends to even had motorcycle licenses. But until the last few years, it wasn't a big thing riding in groups. Now. Riding in a group is great fun, or it could be your worst nightmare. So I'm a trained road captain. I used to be part of a motorcycle club a couple of years ago, and I was a road captain. So if anybody doesn't know, that's the kind of guy who leads the pack and knows the directions to the final, kind of like from the beginning to the end of the, the desired route. So. Normally when I go on a run with my wife and a few of my friends, we kind of, you know, I usually kind of take lead and then only until recently, so Sarah will start going to the front now because I'm trying to get her to like, pick up the confidence to know she wants to lead the speed. So that's kind of what the big thing for today is. It's a case of what do you do? Do you know, are you, are you happy going out in big groups or are you happy as an individual riding on your own? Me personally, I'll do either or, 
you know, I'll ride to the speed of the slowest rider in the group. Um, I'll, then some people can, you know, some people, the slowest rider can sometimes be the fastest. They could be like somebody who has all the confidence in the world and can do 60, 70 miles an hour all the time, no matter where they are. Whereas some people with a bit less confidence need to go a bit slower just because they're unsure of the road. We're all different and that's what makes it even more interesting if you're on a group run. So that is what we're trying to do today. We are actually just down to tune ourselves back into how we all ride on the road after a long winter off and I thought I'd quickly show you round Loch Lomond and the surrounding shores and test out this camera and audio set up at the same time. I'm really hoping it's uh, like going to cure some of the issues that I have with me having like a deep Scottish accent and sometimes it can cause a lot of audio clipping so this way I'm hoping it has solved it. But so far we have no Ross but I'm sure you'll catch us up. There's a little cafe up here on the top of the on the north north end of Loch Lomond and we're going to pull in there but we're trying to stick about 50 miles an hour uh, to try and like see if Ross can catch up the traffic as you can probably see in my rear view mirror is a fair bit behind me so I'm not really holding anybody I don't know if Ross went blast ahead or he actually took the wrong road uh, but I've got Mrs Burning Gas hauling ass up here right in front of me and she's got her GoPro on right now. She's testing out her audio setup as well. So she'll only be really paying attention to me in the mirror. I think she knows where we're going, so that'll be the next interesting part. So it doesn't look like much, guys, but this is actually a fantastic road to ride. The um, scenery is beautiful. I think it opens up in a bit. So what I'll do is I'll cut to some of that footage um, instead of hearing me give her on and testing his audio. But I see a lot of bikes on the road, as you've probably seen a few of them passing me. And an answer to a question um, that I did see uh, one of the other mobile vloggers give to one of the British guys was, how do you communicate with each other if you see a motor like another biker going past? And one of the things, like, you know, when the Americans have all seen them, you know, doing like this kind of thing, and, you know, but here in the UK, they, don't, they give it the, the nod, the nod. You know, and if you don't get a nod back or whatever, everybody usually grunts under their helmet and grrrr, you know. But it's probably the same in the States, if you don't get a little bit of acknowledgement to say, hello fellow biker, you know, you're facing the same kind of dangers that I am on the road. Uh, you know, um, if you don't acknowledge me, then you're basically an asshole. <laughs> but we're all different. Uh, I can't acknowledge everybody if 40 bikes go past I'll have a sore damn neck from doing that all day so usually I just wave now with my right hand above my throttle which you can probably see, I just do that and, uh, and that's what we usually do in these big runs especially up here in Scotland when there's like, when you get to these kind of roads up the Trossocks and heading towards the, the, f the further in the west coast um, you see a lot more, you see a lot more bikers on here so yeah Quick cracking, cracking road, cracking company, obviously with Mrs. Burning Gas hauling ass before I head back to work, we get out on our bikes together. I can't believe I lost Ross, I genuinely can't believe it. <laughs> I know he told me, he, we literally did stop at the McDonald's before we came up here. I've got a terrible sense of direction, he was right in front of Sarah, he went round the roundabout and now I've lost him. How on earth does that even happen? So, who knows, um, I'm sure he'll find us at some point. Uh, I, I mean, I did see a row of motorbikes behind us with the, uh, <laughs> with the footage on it, <laughs> with the lights on, so I'm hoping he's one of them, and he's just not got the confidence to overtake yet. Uh, I don't know how much of this you can see, guys, in this camera footage at the moment. Um, I'm going to say you can probably see quite a lot of it, but when this hits full bloom, usually by May, June. It's a beautiful road. You know, everybody's up here, everybody's having a good time. I haven't even shown you the, the proper side of the uh, off of Holman yet. And you'll actually see the water side, so when we pull into this cafe, um, we'll get a good chance to see it. But 
Uh, what I'll do is I'll just carry on recording and uh, see if there's, oh, there comes a motorbike. It might be Ross. See if he overtakes. If it's a green Kawasaki, then it probably will be. And I think it is. So I'll move over to the left. Here he comes. There he, there he goes. So that is uh, Ross Meets World, people. I'll put his Instagram in this video. Uh, he has decided to join us on this uh, whirlwind tour. Arrived. That's who. This place. Welcome to Inver Uglis. <laughs> I'm not going to try and pronounce it. And I'm from Scotland, so Sarah's arrived in one piece. Ross eventually arrived in one piece. I don't know where. I don't know where. Where, where did you go? Oh, jeez. Right, OK, they're having a debate over probably the car that cut in front of them. So I'm going to take you over to here. Look at this, guys. Apart from people just parking in random places, but... Isn't this beautiful? There you go. Welcome to Scotland. So this is where we usually come up on during the winter time. We take our cars, we do everything. And then we come up here and we kind of fly some of our drones. We get some cracking footage over here. So I'm going to do the same today. Going to see what it's like. Going to get up, get some footage. Hopefully get a cup of coffee from this place. I'm going to go back over and uh, find out what happened to Ross. So, Ross, come to the camera. Come to the come to the camera and explain where did you end up, Ross? And be PC to this camera. I yep. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. I did see a row of bikes. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, I seen a load of bikes behind me, and I was a bit like, I went, I guarantee one of them's Ross. And I was just telling everybody, I said, Ross just told me that we were stopped before we came up here that your sense of direction is absolutely shocking. Uh, <laughs> but to be fair, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for everybody who's watching this, make sure you go over and look at Ross's Instagram on Ross Meets World. I'm sure you'll put up some lovely photographs. I know his Instagram has actually got nothing on it right now. And I kept saying to him, I says, look, you just need to put a picture up on there. Everybody will probably see the same thing. You're probably probably looking for them. Why would you follow somebody with no photographs, Ross? Exactly. And there's Sarah with her audio. There's somebody with a phone. So let's say... Uh, Let's go and relax and enjoy the sunshine. 